is Israel's human shield argument, which it deploys to explain the extraordinary number of civilian casualties in Gaza now dead in the water. Stunning new reporting from Plus 972 magazine presents evidence that Israel's military employed an AI program called Lavender that literally marks people and puts them on a kill list. Just days after an IDF strike killed seven World Central Kitchen aid workers in Gaza, the IDF told Israeli news outlet Haaretz that the strike was a result of lack of discipline on the part of commanders on the ground and not due to coordination problems between the army and the humanitarian organization. Yet the bombshell new reporting argues that the Israeli army allegedly marked thousands of Gazans as suspects for assassination using an artificial intelligence machine. The new investigation reveals uh, six uh, Israeli intelligent officers saying the new AI technology has played a central role in the, quote, unprecedented bombing of Palestinians. According to the report, during the first weeks of the war, the army almost completely relied on lavender, which clocked as many as 37,000 Palestinians as suspected militants and their homes for possible airstrikes. According to the magazine, during the early stages of the war, the army gave sweeping approval for officers to adopt Lavender's kill lists with no requirement to thoroughly check why the machine made those choices or to examine the raw intelligence data on which they were based. This is despite knowing that the system makes errors in 10% of cases and is known to occasionally mark individuals who have merely a loose connection to militant groups or no connection at all. And one of the more disturbing aspects of the reporting, the Israeli army is alleged to have systematically attacked tar and targeted individuals while they were in their homes, usually at night while their whole families were present, rather than during the course of military activity. One of those systems was actually called Where's Daddy? As a result, sources testified that thousands of Palestinians, most of them women and children who were not involved, were wiped out by Israeli airstrikes in the first weeks of the war. While the IDF has said it, quote, only targets terrorists and military targets, doctors are saying otherwise. According to a New Guardian report published on Tuesday, doctors say children have been targeted by Israeli snipers in Gaza. Canadian ph uh, physician Dr. Fulzia Alvi said, this is not a normal war. The war in Ukraine has killed 500 kids in two years, and the war in Gaza has killed over 10,000 in less than five months. We have seen wars before, but this is something that is a dark stain on our shared humanity. So, Robbie, this uh, 972 Magazine reporting has really been a bombshell because it seems to go to the heart of the defense that Israel has been making for six months now, which is that to the extent civilian casualty counts are high, and obviously people dispute to what extent of the 32,000 plus people who've been killed at this point are militants versus civilians, that no one disputes that the number is high. And, and is, what Israel has been saying is, well, Hamas uses people as human shields, and to the extent that any civilians are killed, it's Hamas's fault. We've seen this refrain parroted by Bibi Netanyahu, by people like John Fetterman. No matter who dies, no matter if they're children, no matter if there's people in their hospital bed sick, it's Israel's fault because there's Hamas in the ho sorry, uh, there's Hamas's fault because there's Hamas in the hospital. There's Hamas everywhere. This reporting about the use of this AI technology suggests that there's a systematic choice to use technology that is known to have a 10% built-in error rate right off the bat, and moreover, which makes the choice to target even genuine militants why they know they are being surrounded by family, children, women who are not involved in the conflict. But that's not the technology making that choice, right? They're setting it to make that choice. Yes. So it's still like I don't. It's, it's Israel. It's it's. Yeah. I mean, a hundred percent. Right. I, what I'm saying is, there's something a little like Black Mirror or sci-fi about this, but I don't know that the the AI is going to end up being um, more inaccurate than human error if if these are indeed you know mistakes. I mean, how many people are getting um, uh, blown you know blown up and should not have been targeted? would have been if it was done by human choice, right? Well, there's two aspects of this. One is the 10% built-in error rate. They know that error rate exists because they did a human check, they found the errors, and they said that's okay collateral damage for us, what right? Is, what is, so what is how would they rate? even know what, what an error rate error is rate? if you can't have a human being make that assessment? An error rate is killing someone who is an innocent. Right, but you're saying, or the, the people critical of this program are saying that um, that's, 
the vast majority of the people that they're killing, right? Because killing people in their homes are, by definition, not engaged in no, there's combat? Two things. Or... There's two things. There's an error rate in the initial target, and there's the choice to get what might be That's a legitimate what I'm asking. target. Like, by error rate, do they mean we meant to hit this and we hit this instead? That's my question. No, it's not about missing the target. It's okay. about choosing the wrong target or targeting essentially the right target while they are known to be surrounded by innocent people. There is another aspect, though, of um, sort of the other kind of error that you just alluded to, um, you know, missing the desired target regardless of if you were targeting a family or targeting um, an, an actual militant because there was a choice to use... Um, uh, I forget the name of the bombs, but a less the cheaper bombs that are less accurate that tend to right. not not be as basically not sure. be as accurate on their targets because it saves money. Knowing that it, you know basically the argument being it doesn't really matter the bomb will bring the whole building down. We don't have to have as much precision targeting when we're already operating on this kind of AI basis of a t uh, casting a broad net. So all this is to say these human shield argument implies that Hamas, it's Hamas who's intentionally quartering with families, surrounding themselves with injured people in hospitals, going to schools and the like, literally using civilians as human shields to insulate themselves. Quite the opposite, the portrait that this report paints is that Hamas militants go out into the world and they do militancy and they're going about their business, but the choice is being made not to strike them while they're there away from their families. But in this program that's literally called Where's Daddy, making the choice to target them back on their home. The article also goes into some detail about why the, the, some of the mistakes are made. Um, the program uses cell phone data and certain kind of features like, does someone change their cell phone number a lot? Uh, is somebody um, has someone, is someone using a cell phone that used to belong to a uh, alleged militant as in, indicia that caused them to be targeted? But of course, you can imagine how many accidents can be made. Do you happen to just have a clumsy kid that breaks their cell phone a lot? Are you a relative of someone who might very well be in Hamas, but you have nothing to do with it at all? If you don't have human eyes being put on a program, that obviously opens up the door to having a lot of false positives. And I think the most the most disturbing aspect of this is the built-in desire to have false positives by targeting people while they know they're around civilians. Right. I mean, I, there's clearly a willingness to do that. I, I don't know what you mean, though, about, like, they wait, they're engaged in military. Like, if they were easily gathered somewhere else where they could be rounded up or killed, that would be done. I mean, they, they did that when they attacked not, on October 7th, and they caught them by surprise. That, that's what's not being done. Because that's that what doesn't happen. That's what this report happen. is showing. Because that doesn't happen. No, because this, this actual piece of journalism that interviewed six um, members of the Israeli military demonstrates that the choice, a policy choice is being made to intentionally maxima, maximize civilian casualties. I'll read you just one section here. Uh, it says, um, in an unprecedented move, according to two of the sources, the army also decided during the first weeks of the war that for every junior Hamas operative that Lavender marked, it was permissible to kill up to 15 or 20 civilians. In the past, the military did not authorize any collateral damage during assassinations of low-ranking militants. The sources added that in the event that the target was a senior Hamas official with the rank of battalion or brigade commander, the army on several occasions authorized the killing of more than 100 civilians in the assassination of a single commander. Yeah, they are fully at war with Hamas and they are willing to have numerous civilian casualties in the course of taking out Hamas operatives. It's well, in making war. that decision, uh, Israel sets itself apart from any other modern army as incredibly more cruel and accepting of civilian casualties. And it's the kind of behavior that we, that is both in violation of international law and that most Western countries would condemn without any qualification. A hundred civilians for one military target um, is an incredible shift from what we accept in our own uh, um, kind of international law framework as an acceptable collateral damage. And it really starts to explain how you can get over 30,000 people killed in six months with such a relatively small number of uh, alleged militants having been implicated. More rising right after this.